Hey guys, how's it going? It is Travis Wartz with the Forest Hill Film Lab and today I'm kind of going to do a video um, talking about developing uh, color film at home. Uh, if you go way back in my archives, I've actually already done a video kind of talking about the development process, but um, I kind of made the mistake of using my Jobo in the, in the example and so this time I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. Um, I'm probably not going to take you through all the steps of actually developing the film, but more importantly I'm going to show you what exactly the supplies you need are and really just how easy it is to get all the stuff you need to develop color film at home. Um, you know, in these trying times, um, a lot of labs have closed, so we're kind of left doing it ourselves, which personally I think is pretty great. Like, you know, if this is the push you need to start processing your own film at home, then I guess that's a positive from the whole situation that we're dealing with. Um, I'm kind of making this video for a lot of you guys out there that are already developing black and white at home, so you already have a lot of the supplies you need for development, like a developing tank, measuring cups, uh, thermometer, things like that. Um, and I'm just going to be kind of running you guys through the extra supplies you're going to need to uh, get the ball rolling on doing your own color film because truly it is actually a lot easier than black and white. Um, once you get your chemicals mixed, there's not really a whole lot that you have to do. And, um, you know, really the hardest part about doing color film at home is the, uh, the heating of the chemicals which uh, I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about, um, you know, a way to get around that and, and uh, a way of, you know, making that easier for you. So uh, basically I'm going to kind of get started here and just kind of show you my process. Um, I have to mix up some chemicals today, so I'll probably just do that with you guys as well so you can kind of see uh, that the process isn't really as intimidating as you might think. So uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to show you guys some of the things that you're going to need that you probably don't already have. And uh, hopefully this will motivate you guys to get started on doing color film yourself at home. Alrighty, so um, I'm going to just kind of lay out a list of things that you guys probably don't already have. If you are doing black and white at home yourself, you're going to have a nice list of things that you do already have. Like I said, the developing tank, the film hang hanging clips, uh, you know, graduate, things like that. Um, but the, there's a couple extra supplies you're going to need to get the ball rolling on your color film. Um, so the first thing is, this is um, a Unicolor powder kit. This is what I like to use. Um, I get the two liter kit just because I do a lot of film and the one liter kit ends up running out you know, with the, the large batches that I do. Um, but for you guys at home, a one liter kit would be you know, sufficient. Um, so we got the Unicolor C41 powder kit. Uh, this sells for like 25 bucks on Freestyle. Um, and the two liter kit's about 45 bucks. So we got that. Uh, up here, we've got a Patterson squeegee. Um, it kind of sucks having to squeegee your film, but with color film, it's really the only way to get the stabilizer stains off. So here's a Patterson film squeegee. Uh, these things run about 15 bucks on Freestyle. So we're gonna need one of those. Um, we're gonna need some of these containers here. I actually already have some chemicals mixed in here that I'm probably going to have to dump out, but uh, these are like 1,000 milliliter containers, one liter if you will. Um, I prefer the Jobo containers just because they fit my old, well I don't even use the Jobo anymore, but they are 1,000 milliliters. These things are like 13 bucks a piece though, so if you can figure out any container really that will hold a liter of fluid is really all you need. So um, I see a lot of guys using you know old milk jugs or um, you know liquor bottles or you know metal watering water container. It could be anything really as long as it holds a liter of fluid. Um, it, it'll pretty much do the job. So you guys can really improvise on that. But we're going to need four of these. So we're going to need one for water, one for developer one for our Blix or our fixer, and then the last one we're gonna use for stabilizer. So we're gonna need four of these containers. Here, I'll grab a couple more just to kind of illustrate, you know, four containers. Um, here I've got this bucket, and this is what I've been using for my water bath. Um, this is just like an industrial restaurant, you know, bucket container. Um, again, this is something you could probably improvise. You could go get a Tupperware bin from, you know, the dollar store or something. Anything that will hold water. Um, and then the last thing you're going to need is this device. 
This is called a sous vide. Um, a few years back, I went to a buddy's house, and his roommate was like a chef, and he had like he had this just like on a shelf in his kitchen. I'm like, what the hell is that? And he's like, oh, it's a, it's a sous vide. And so basically, you could like put steak in a plastic bag. You could cook the steak in warm water, and then you could grill it, and I guess it makes perfect steak. I don't know. I just cook up film chemicals with it. But um, I bought this thing for 50 bucks on eBay. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, Cinestill sells one for $100 for no goddamn reason. Um, this is a $50 unit. It works excellent. Uh, I just set it in here, and what it does is it circulates the water for me, and it gets the water hot, and... In turn, I put my chemical bottles in there just like so, and it heats up my chemicals for me. So um, that's really, th those are all the supplies you're going to need to do color if you already have developing tanks and all that other good stuff. It's just that simple. You need a, you know, a heating element. You need a bath container. Um, you need a couple bottles to hold your chemicals. And you need a squeegee and some powder. So, um, you know, it, it really is quite simple. Uh, I tell people all the time that black and white is actually a little more difficult. So I tell people to start with black and white because if you can figure that out, then color is going to be a breeze. So um, I'm kind of going to show you guys my process. Um, what I like to do is I like to get my chemicals heated up. Or I like to get my water hot first because if you leave water in here, I'm, I'm in a dark room that's you know in the woods and it gets cold in here. If I just left water in here, it would be like 50 degrees. Then I would turn on this unit and it would probably take an hour to heat up. But instead, um, I like to run a little bit of hot water. We'll wait for my hot water heater to heat up. And uh, I started out with about 90, 100 degree water. Then I turn on the sous vide and it has a really easy time getting it up to temperature. So I'm going to plug this back in. Wait for that to heat up, I'll skip ahead. Alright, so I filled up that tank, that tub over there with hot water coming out of my, my hot water uh, faucet. It's at 100 degrees right now. And our target temperature is 105 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's pretty cool. We're, we're pretty much already there. Um, the one difference is that just because that bath is hot doesn't necessarily mean our chemicals are hot yet. So once we put our bottles in there, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for them to come up to temperature. Um, I usually stick a thermometer in my water jug and wait for it to say 105, and then you know that you're good to go. So... Um, that's over there steaming. I'm going to put the sous vide in there to get it to finish up. The nice thing about this sous vide is it is dead on accurate. Um, I put it on 105 and it'll sit at 105 for eight hours if I want to. And um, unlike my Jobo processors, they take a lot of work because it's pumping around water and it's pumping around dirty water from my chemicals kind of leaking and all that good stuff. So the pumps get all gummed up and eventually die like they did on both of my Jobo processors. So um, this way has become more efficient for me. I probably should have done it years ago, but here we go. So I'm going to stick it in there, set it up to 105. Let's see here. So it says that it's at 89, but my thermometer says different. Either way, It'll do it. Oh, there we go. See, it's jumping 93. It's going to get a get a feel for the temperature there. And while that's heating up, I can get going on uh, mixing up some of these chemicals. So this is a 2,000 milliliter um, container, which is uh, what I use to mix up my chemicals. In the past, I used to just do it with cold water because that's all I had down here. But um, the package does recommend using hot water to mix. And I think, it I think it dissolves the powder a little bit better anyhow. Um, since I'm doing a 2,000 milliliter kit, I'm going to put like 1,000 milliliters of water in there just to start. Um, but typically, you want to use less fluid first so that you can pour your powder in and then fill up the rest to make it the working solution that you want. So there we go. Got about 1,000 in there. I'm going to cut this package open. 
And this is, how, this is a really easy process. Like I said, I think that in my old video, I went over this once before, but it doesn't hurt going over things a couple times for people who haven't seen it. So here, what do we have here? That's our Blix. We'll set that aside. The Blix is a real pain in the ass because it's got two parts, so it ends up taking a little bit longer to dissolve fully. Um, so here's our developer. I'm gonna cut this off, pour it in there, and basically just stir it up until it's all dissolved in there. And then once it's all dissolved in there, I'm gonna add more water to make my working solution of 2,000. Alright, so I added, a, I mixed it all up. The powder dissolves pretty nicely for the developer. I got my bottles labeled developer, so I'm going to pour this in there now. Hmm. Yeah, let's get a funnel. Six filthy hard. These containers aren't great for pouring. I don't know why. You'd think they'd be better, but... Oh, and look at our sous vide's already already uh, to the temperature. That's how quick that goes. I really only turned the camera off for a couple minutes, and it's already up to the temperature I need it, which is awesome. My Jobo would have taken me three hours to get up to temperature in this uh, in this cold weather. So it's a huge, huge uh, you know advancement. There we go. I lost a little bit. That's okay. So here we go, there we have it. Our developer is mixed. And I could go ahead and put that in the, uh, put that in the bath over here and let them get up to the perfect temperature. As you see, they're just submerged in the water and they will end up getting up to temperature that way. Oh, that warm water feels nice. So I'm going to do the same thing for the Blakes now. The Blakes is a two-part process. Uh, like I was saying, it's got it's just got like so much more powder than the developer that it takes literally forever for it to dissolve. So I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me stir and all that, but you can see it's Blakes A and Blakes B. Uh, look at I already put too much water in there. a little trickier because the less water you put the more powder to water ratio there is and then it takes even longer to dissolve the powder so you know I I've kind of just been inching the powder in there stir inch stir and it seems like that has been the most successful way of doing this um, you know even still after I stir a bunch like there's still a little bit of like crap left on the bottom of this container so that's something that you got to look out for uh, when you're when you're mixing this stuff up is really trying to use all the powder and get it all dissolved into the um, into the water if you can it's tough though it really is so I'm gonna rinse this thing off my little stir So here we go, we're gonna get started and I'll probably skip ahead so you guys don't have to watch me stirring for 10 minutes. Whew. The nice thing about these chemicals is once you have a mix, then they're mixed and you don't need to worry about anything for the you know next few weeks or months that you're developing with this kit. Um, and that's what I love most about color processing is that my chemicals are ready to go, just heat them up and get to work. And so that's why really it is easier than black and white once you've done this process, which well, this process isn't very difficult. This is just like cooking or something. You know, you pour some stuff in and you mix it and you're done. So I'm gonna keep stirring here and I'll probably skip ahead so you guys don't have to watch me stir. Here we go. So now I've got the uh, part A mixed up in there. And uh, I wanted to show you guys this part because it's my favorite part about mixing up color chemicals. Um, when you add part B to part A, you get what's called an endothermic reaction. That's just what the instructions say. 
I'm not that smart. And uh, so when you pour it in there, this stuff's like yellowy, brownish crap. When you pour it in there, it's actually going to start fizzling. And you'll see it start bubbling up. And what it'll do is it'll start steaming. And this part, this part B is actually the part that like really has a hard time dissolving. So I'm going to try to pour it in there a little bit less. And you can see now, even though it's black and white, that the, the chemicals actually got really, really dark. It actually has like a dark amber color. And this is the easy way to tell your chemicals apart in the future, is one's disgusting amber and one's not. So you can see it fizzing up a little bit. And this is, a, this is the part of photography that really feels like chemistry to me. Oh, man. It's such a cool looking thing. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stir this up for another few minutes because I don't want any of that gunk at the bottom of my container. And you can still see now I'm at about 1,500 milliliters here. Um, so I still have a little bit of water to add to this to make my perfect working solution of 2,000. So here we go, I'm just gonna keep stirring, it's fizzing. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to get my perfect working solution. Of 2,000. That's the hardest part about this is that my container is just the right size. I probably could have used a bigger one, but I don't know. I just like using this one, I guess. Um, so we've got our empty containers here, and I'm probably going to make a mess pouring this stuff in here. But bear with me. I want you guys to know that it's not always perfect. Ooh! Okay, that wasn't too bad. Just a little spillage. One of my favorite things to do is clean my sink out anyway, so a little bit of leakage is not, not a problem for me. Just an opportunity to clean my sink. Here we go. Hey, we did pretty good. The bottom of this container is really not too sludged up. A little bit of grit in there, and I don't know, I can never really get rid of that. It's so difficult. Even though I stirred and stirred and stirred, there's still a little bit of sludge left over. But nonetheless, it will definitely do the job. Put some caps on there. There we go. And go ahead and put them in the bath over here. These two containers are for water because when you're doing color film, you got to start out with water and you got to finish with water. So it's always important to have warm water on hand because that's what it calls for. Um, and this is, you know, a good reason why you should, you know, not buy super expensive containers. Just get something makeshift because it doesn't really make that much of a difference what the water is being held in. So we're going to put some water in there. Here we go. Here we go. And the last step that we have to make is a stabilizer, which is like the easiest of them all, and I'll show you guys why. Perfect. We'll start rinsing that out. These are my stabilizer containers. I like using these containers because they're stainless so I can really see when they're clean or not. Makes it a little bit nicer. So for the stabilizer, it's actually very simple. 
just this little, oh, it usually comes in like a Ziploc, but now they're foil sealing it. So it's just like this little tiny bag of powder and it mixes in there pretty easy. I could probably just pour it in there and keep the water running and it'll do its job. Oh, there we go. That's it. That's easy. It smells like fish. People say there's formaldehyde in this stuff. I don't know if that's old school or if that's new, but it sure smells like gross. Yeah, it's pretty gross smelling. So there we go, our stabilizer's mixed. That stuff just disappears into the water pretty nicely. It doesn't rest at the bottom or anything crazy. And so yeah, we'll pour that into here. Probably, oh look, I got another funnel, how perfect. Of course, that's the best pour of the day. And there we go. Now we have mixed up color chemicals, super easy. Uh, the stabilizer does not need to be heated up, so you just kind of set that aside, let it be room temperature, and wait till you need it. And that is that. That's how easy it is to mix up our color chemicals. Um, like I said, I'm probably not going to go through the whole process of developing with you guys, but I will definitely walk you through it so you can understand how easy it is. Uh, I just don't really feel like making this video any longer than it has to be. So I'll, uh, I'll walk you guys through that. And hopefully this will motivate you guys to start doing color yourself at home. All right, so I'm just going to kind of explain it to you guys, streamline, um, just kind of rapid fire through the process so you can see how simple it really is. But uh, the way we would start out is we would start out with hot water in the tank for one minute. Um, I got hot water here, but like I said, we have our bath over there that we can use. So put our water in there. And it says only one minute when you're doing a hand tank. I use, a, oops, excuse me. I use a rotary processor, so the times and the things are a little bit different. I've actually never really done it with a hand tank, but I'm going to walk you guys through how to do it. So yeah, we would shake it up, just let it sit for a minute, let the film kind of get acclimated to the temperature. That's really what you're doing. Um, after a minute, we're going to dump it out, and then we're going to pour our developer in there. Now, for our developer, we're going to pour it in. Uh, grab our developer, you know, pour in 20 ounces for a uh, normal hand tank. We're going to agitate for 10 seconds, like this. The first 10 seconds we're going to agitate, we're going to let it sit, and then for every 30 seconds we're going to agitate. And we're only going to do that for three and a half minutes, which is like no time at all. We're going to pour our chemicals back into our developer container because these are all reusable. And between developer and Blix, there's no wash cycle, which is always kind of weird to me. I always kind of want to wash it, but it says don't, don't wash in between. So then we would go straight into our Blix, pour our Blix in there again, do uh, 10 seconds for the first uh, right when you pour it in, and then every 30 seconds do a couple inversions for only six minutes. And so after that six minutes is up, believe it or not, your film is processed, you're done. Then, uh, once the Blix is done, we're going to get some more water, pour the water in there. It says to fill and dump the tank a couple times with warm water, just to get all that Blix crap off of there. Uh, but your film's developed. It's already done. It takes about nine minutes to develop color film. About ten, I guess, if you use six plus three and a half. Um, and then once it's washed, uh, we're going to pour our stabilizer into a container like this. And we'll drop our film in there. Let it sit for about a minute, pull it off, squeegee the excess stabilizer that's on the film, and hang it to dry. It's really that simple. Um, like I said, I do have an old video where I kind of really go through the motions, but um, I, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this. It really is that easy. Just like I said, if you do black and white, you kind of already have the process in your mind. You already know the deal. Um, but yeah, water, developer, Blix, water, and, and your film's processed. 
put it in the stabilizer to you know help protect the film, help keep it from getting water spots on it, and you're done. Really, the hardest part about doing color film is getting all the supplies, but like I showed you guys at the beginning of this video, it's really not that much. It's probably about 100, 150 bucks if you decide to you know buy the nice bottles and buy all the nice shit, but. You know, the sous vide's $50, the chemicals are $25, they're $75, bucks, and really everything else you can improvise. Get your $15 um, squeegee, you're at about $90, bucks, $100 with shipping. And uh, a one liter kit will allow you to do about 25 to 30 rolls of film. So you can do the math on that one on how much money it'll save you. Um, I do develop color film for people myself, but, you know, that's not what this channel's about. I'm really trying to get you guys to do it. I don't want to do your shit for you. I want you to do your shit for you. So, um, so yeah, it, it's really that easy. Um, you saw the list of things we need. You, you heard how much it costs. It's really not that hard. It's not that intimidating. The hardest part is temperature control. And now we have this nice device that does it for us. You know, this thing's been at 105 degrees already for a couple minutes and, uh, and it'll hold on to that temperature for eight hours if you want it to or even longer. So, so I hope this video was helpful to some of you guys. Um, unfortunately, when I went to go look at prices for all this stuff, I noticed that Freestyle was out of stock of their C41 chemicals. Um, there are different kits on there you can get probably and uh, they will be back in stock again soon. Um, it makes me happy to see that people are taking the initiative to develop at home. and. Uh, and hopefully this will motivate you guys to do the same. Um, even if it means you know getting the supplies ahead of time and, and once the developer becomes available, that'll be the last thing you guys have to get. Um, that would be awesome. But um, you know, it really is as easy as it looks. Um, it's easier than black and white films. So if you've ever done that, um, you should have no problem figuring this out. Um, I hope that this motivates somebody out there to develop their own film at home and save some money. Um, one kit will get you about 25 or 30 rolls of developing um, and you know the math on that one's not too hard to do um, it's obviously going to be saving you tons of money at just about a dollar a roll for developing um, but yeah it's not too difficult just needs a couple supplies like I showed you at the beginning of this video and you'll be well on your way and most of the supplies are things that you don't need to replace so once you get them you will only be left buying chemicals which is what I do uh, I spend about 40 bucks every few months and, uh, you know, I can develop to my heart's content. So hopefully this video helped you guys in some way or another. And thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, keep on shooting.